Welcome to a module that will focus on cryptography. The module will include a discussion on the modes of operation of symmetric and asymmetric ciphers. The models ensure that data that is encrypted using an appropriate algorithm is secure and its confidentiality has not been compromised, provided you have successfully protected a key used for encryption. We'll also take a look at cryptographic applications, the cryptographic systems that are used today. Most cryptographic systems today use hybrid schemes. A few words of introduction. Throughout the course, we have emphasized over and over that encrypting is the only viable solution that guarantees top data security and authenticity level. Data protection by means of access control lists is efficient only in a running operating system that implements the mechanism. Applying encryption, however, guarantees the data will remain encrypted whether it's located on a disk or sent over a network. As far as encrypting is concerned, let's start with a more basic term, coding. Coding and encryption are similar in nature. Their comparable processes are operations. Coding is, however, more broad in scope. When you talk of coding, you refer to the process of translating programming expressions from one language into another. Computers are coding machines. Letters and digits you press on the keyboard are in fact transformed into bits by the machine. Computers interpret bit values, zero and one states. As regards data confidentiality, steganography is a peculiar subtype of coding. Steganography is a method for hiding information in such a way that only a person who knows where to search is able to find it. The image is blurred because it's multi-layered. The first layer contains an image, but the internal layer has completely different data. The internet is brimming with tools to hide information, for example, in image files. A human eye is not sensitive enough to discriminate detailed transitions, for example, in shades. If color depth is, for example, 24 bits, the last six or seven bits are actually invisible for humans. These bit values don't add to your image reception. You don't have to put color information in them, but embed data there. For example, text. To extract it later, you'd need a specially designed program that looks at the last six or seven bits and converts them into text that is later displayed. This means that it's possible to publish information intended only for a specific group of recipients on public websites. Everyone will be able to see an image, for example, a Windows login screen image. This is a rather homogeneous image. There are a lot of redundant bits that are an ideal place for embedding coded data. A person who downloads the file and extracts the hidden information will be able to read your message. What's the difference between encryption and coding? If you want to encrypt some data, you assume that the encoded information will not be read unless the recipient is in possession of an additional piece of information, a key. An encoder, a special type of coding machine, must have some additional information, a key. At least in theory, this key is necessary to invert the whole process and decode an encrypted piece of information to receive it in plain text. Let's now briefly explain the terminology. The first term that is of note for us is cryptography, a set of techniques for encrypting and decrypting data. All algorithms for encryption, ciphers, will operate following one very general formula. A ciphertext is a result of transformation performed on a plain text. The general scheme is very simple. You can divide ciphers, coding machines, at several levels. The first division can be made based on what key, parameter, is used by a specific algorithm. In this regard, ciphers can be classed as symmetric or asymmetric. 
We'll return to them later in the lecture. We'd like to focus now on a different vital differentiation. Algorithms can be either public or secret. Quite frequently, software is sold and marketed as 100% secure. The data processed in the software is encrypted using an obscure or little-known mechanism. The assumption is that we, users, should not know about used ciphers. This knowledge should only be shared between software architects and programmers. In practice, this secrecy could mean that the software simply tries to cloud for some reason using a common algorithm, or that the producers have implemented in it some proprietary encryption solution. This is a significant issue. If this is true, this violates one of the fundamental cryptography laws formulated by August Kirchhoff that is named after his Kirchhoff's principle. The principle stipulates that the security of a cipher should only depend on the security of the key. It should not depend on the secrecy of algorithms used for encryption and decryption. This is a very simple maxim that, reformulated, also means that you can't make a public piece of information secret. If more than two people know something, it's no longer a secret. Ciphers are obviously implemented in all copies of a given program. It wouldn't work without them. Even if program creators wish that the ciphers remain secret, if you're determined enough and have enough time and knowledge, you can debug a program or analyze the operations it performs in some other way, and use this to extract data on the operation of the used algorithm. Why is this so dangerous? When you try to veil something, it's not usually to hide dependable and tested solutions but to obscure the solutions you wouldn't want to share for a number of reasons. This is a particularly lamentable security practice that is known as security through obscurity. Speaking from experience, almost all solutions that have implemented secret cryptographic algorithms have shown to be too weak. Once the operation mode of an algorithm is discovered, breaking it is trivially easy. And discovery is always a threat. A practical consequence of Kirchhoff's principle is that you should never use secret ciphers. It's possible to roll off a huge list of instances to support this law. You might remember, for example, that not so long ago an encryption system was employed on DVDs. To make viewers able to legally watch the video they purchased, a key had to be located somewhere for content decryption. This information was public. Once the DVD content protection standard was published, programs for removing the security mechanism were developed and put on the internet within days. Microsoft had the same problem with the first version of Xbox. The console was protected against installing some programs or modifying the operating system the device used. And again, in spite of the fact that the data in the programs were encrypted and that their authenticity would be checked, Despite secure cryptographic mechanisms being implemented, the key itself had to be stored in the Xbox. The cryptographic system would not work otherwise. Before long, people would develop methods for hacking the console. It's impossible to successfully protect a public piece of information. Cryptanalysis, on the other hand, is a set of techniques used to reverse encryption without knowledge of a key. This module will discuss cryptanalysis later when comparing various algorithms, especially public key algorithms. The security of a ciphertext is the ciphertext's immunity to cryptanalysis. What, generally speaking, does this security depend on? The first vital factor is the used algorithm. The security of the ciphertext is also influenced by key strength. Strictly speaking, it depends on the key randomness. We'll refer to this concept as entropy. It will also be covered later.